So you've bought the Counter Surge deck from the new Challenger decks and you want to upgrade it. Let's see which cards can make that deck just oh so much better. Welcome everyone, I'm Matt from Total MTG, and today I'm looking at the Counter Surge deck and just seeing how um, I feel that we can upgrade this deck. Now we'll be going through over the next week or so, coming weeks, um, all of the decks and giving them a, my personal upgrade. Now my upgrade may be different to yours, but let's just see what I have in store for this deck. So from the main board of the Counter Surge deck, I have swapped 16 cards, now some of them obviously multiples of the same card, but I've done a 16 card change from the deck itself. Now the deck did run pretty smooth, as you probably did see in my gameplay video on the channel, but let's have a look at what I have brought out and what is going to come in. So the cards that are coming out from the deck are two Scrap Heat Scrounger, one Rishkar Pima Renegade, three Dream Stealers, two Gontis, two Walk the Planks, two Hour of Glories, and from the land base, four Foul Orchids. Orchids, Orchids, however you want to pronounce it. So why do I think these cards should be changed? Well, I want to make this deck a lot more consistent and base around the Counters deck. I feel like it needs a little bit more energy and a little bit more ramp possibly as well, because I want to up a card that I think is an absolute winner for this deck, that goes so well with Wine Constrictor, which is the Walking Ballista. So the first card I'm talking about changing is the Scrap Heat Scrounger. It's in there as a tool of, um, I feel this, uh, this card is a lot better in like the vehicle deck, vehicle rush deck, it's good for crewing vehicles, it's very aggro, it's a very good card, but I feel like as a tool of it just doesn't suit this and I don't really want to up it to four. I want something that may be able to block and, and this one isn't doing it, and it isn't gaining us energy, and it isn't going to get counters, and it isn't just, you know, it just for me, it just doesn't fit the deck personally, although it is such a great card. So the two of them are going to be changed. We've got three Rishkar in the main, but we're going to drop that down to two, because I feel like three is just a little bit too much. It does a great effect when it comes in, but once it does that effect, there's nothing, you know, it can make other things tap for mana. So I feel like a two for that is more than enough, and of course it is legendary as well. So I just want this as a nice little combat trick when it comes in, put some counters on, and maybe we get to ability for tap for lands. Dream Stealer is the next card that completely goes for me. I just don't feel it goes with this deck. You may disagree with me, but it's a one, two for three. It has menace, yeah, when it deals combat damage, it makes our opponent discard cards, but we're not really running that kind of theme. So for me, this is, you know, this was an easy choice for me to take out. I'm sure some people go, no, it's the best card. For me, it will definitely be something that can make um, the deck a lot stronger if we play something in its place instead. The next card is the two of Gonti. I think I'm moving Gonti to the sideboard. I don't like it in the main. I like it coming in from the sideboard. The Death Touch is such a good card. It's not dropping from the 75, but it won't just quite make the main. Walk the Plank will certainly be upgraded. So two Walk the Plank, Merfolk's everywhere anyway. So, you know, when I play it online and everything like that, so Merfolk can definitely, you know, it's a, it's a fairly, fairly strong deck. I know uh, my friend Bam will say it's one of the strongest in the format. We tend to disagree on that, eh, Bam? But Walk the Plank, you know, there's a lot stronger out there. Vraska's Intemp, stuff like that. So that will definitely bite the dust as well. Along with the Hour of Glory, same kind of argument with that. Vraska's Contempt for me is a lot stronger card. This does get rid of Gods, fair enough, but so does the Vraska's. It has a nice little effect, does the Hour of Glory. But, you know, and Foul of Orchid, we're going to be upgrading them as well, as you'll soon see. It's a nice land that you can play if you haven't got the Blooming Marshes. But for me, Foul Orchid is just, you know, the simple land upgrade will be that. So let's take a look at which cards I have coming into the deck. So guys, this is how the deck will look now that I've upgraded the Counter Surge deck. And when you start off, it did have one in there, but it needs the full four, which is Walking Ballista. Walking Ballista in this Counter Surge deck is an absolute all-star. It will win you games. So it has to be a four of in the deck. It is just so good. It comes in, you could add an additional counter to get the triggers with obviously the Whiny Constrictor. Remove them, do damage. It's just absolutely brilliant. So even when they do use the spot removal on the Walking Ballista, 
you still will be able to do something, take them off and still do damage. Makes sense, four of them straight in the deck. Glint Sleeve Siphoner is a four of, same as before, when it ends the battlefield, attacks, you get the energy. We've got a bit, you know, a few more ways to make energy now because I've added in four Servant of Conduit into the deck. When this ends the battlefield, you get two energy and you can pay an energy to add any amount of mana. So it can add as a little mana dork as well, you know, help towards the walking ballistas to make them a lot bigger. Or possibly as well get down these Vidurus gear hulks that I've got in there later to pump, you know, to get in there quicker, maybe that little turn earlier. And it really will make the deck a lot more aggro than say having the Dream Stealers and stuff like that in there. You know, these, these to me are really good upgrades. We've still got the four Long Toss Cubs in there and the four Winding Constrictors, of course, because the Winding Constrictor is, you know, that's what the deck is all about. You are making counters. The Winding Constrictor is a 2-3 for a black and a green. Very, very nice card. The counters obviously come in. It comes in with extra counters. You get plus ones. It's just a really good card. So when you get, you know, your Servant comes in, you're going to get double counters if this is already in, into yourself. It's just really good. Interaction, obviously, with energy is where Winding Constrictor, for me, really, really excels. So one of the other new additions I'm bringing in is three Jade Light Rangers. The two one for one double green. When it ends the battle, it explores and then it explores again. Really, really nice card. Helps you, you know, get, we don't have obviously like potential card draw in this, but this will help you go through your deck a little bit. And this could come in possibly with some extra counters and with the Wine and Constrictor on there, it could be really good for just three mana. It could turn into that little beast that you just didn't even think would happen, and then this can be on there. And if maybe it's going to get cards in your hand, Jade Light Ranger, very, very, very good card from Rivals of Ixalan, and you know it goes very well with the deck. I feel. Like I said, the Rish cards going down to two instead of three, and then we've got Verjurus Gear Hulk. It nearly was uh, as a four of. Possibly this may go up to four during a little bit more practice with this new updated deck. Um, but at the moment, I've got it as a three of. It's great. Counters come in. Winding Constrictor's there. It's going to do shenanigans. It's just going to make, you know, creatures really big, or it's going to be a massive, massive big creature itself. And, of course, it has trample, so that really, really helps. Goes over the top of the other creatures. And, you know, potentially, this is definitely one of our game winners. So let's take a look at the spells now. Now, originally, it had two Hour of Glories, four Blossoming Defense, and one Fatal Push. But I've sort of swapped the numbers around on some of these and added in an absolute brilliant all-star from standard. So we've gone down to two Blossoming Defense and moved two to the sideboard. This, you might think, mm, maybe not, maybe not, against a lot of maybe spot removal in this current standard. But I do feel like two's enough at the moment. We want to be more aggro with the creatures in game one and just do that. And then we can bring the defenses when they bring in lots more removal potentially for our creatures. But we do have now, instead of one Fatal Push, we've got four Fatal Push. One of the best removals in standard, sees loads of modern play, really good, really strong card. And then the great all-star for me. I say all-star a lot because there's a lot of cards in standard that I feel are very, very strong at the moment. And Vraska's Contempt is definitely one of them. This was a card that was severely missing from the deck and obviously they put Hour of Glory in there probably because it was a little bit cheaper. Vraska's Contempt is very expensive at the moment. I think it's around $14, $15 possibly. I'm not too sure. So we've got a two of in there. And we are going to put an extra one in the sideboard as well. But Vraska's Contempt can deal with basically anything. Exiles target, creature, planeswalker, and we gain life as well. Which can be very important in this sort of aggro kind of standard meta. So the land base gets a little bit of bump. The Foul Orcs, like I said, have gone. We've replaced them with four Blooming Marsh. We've got four Ether Hub here, and we've got the mixture of the swamps and the forest. And I've also put the two, we've got the two Hash of Oasis in there, and I've put, put in one Ifnar Deadlands. Just because this is, you know, another way to sack a desert. And the ability on that is pretty cool. We've only got as a one of in there. I nearly put two, but I went for one. It puts two minus one one counts on the target creature, so it can help to maybe kill off some other creature or just shrink something down. That could be good as well. Or you can sacrifice this to keep one of your hash ships on there instead, and then do the hash ship thing all over again. Re you know, land base doesn't get that much of an upgrade. Mainly, obviously, it's just the blooming marsh. I do feel like the land base didn't need that much altering. It's, you know, green and black deck. It's not so hard as maybe some of the other challenger decks, apart from obviously the Hazrat deck, which is just smooth sailing, shall we say. Um, but you will be seeing that upgrade. There will be a few cards that needed for that deck. Um, but yeah, that's the land base. So let's take a look at the cyborg. So let's take a look at the cyborg and what I've upgraded to make it just that little bit stronger. 
Starting off with a two off Death Gorge Scavenger. Really nice card, three two, attacks graveyards. Very, very handy card, and obviously you can get counters till the end of turn. But well, you know, it's a, just a nice card. It really does help you in certain games where people are utilizing their graveyard. So it comes in there as a two of. Like I said, Gonti goes to the sideboard. It's, you know, it's, it's not, for me, it doesn't suit into the main deck, but it's, it certainly has to be in the 75. Very, very nice card. You get to, you know, take cards from your opponent. It's got Death Touch. It just makes sense, really. So Blossoming Defense is also there as a two of. Like I said, they had four in a man. We've dropped two. We've gone two and two. We can always bring these back in if there's a, you know, a deck we're playing against. That's a lot of spot removal. So that is there. And then I've dropped from four duress to three duress. No real reason, just wanted to make space for another card in the sideboard still, very nice. A couple of Appetite for the Unnatural still there, and also a couple of Cartouche instead of the three. Comes in, gets you a bit of lifelink against the aggro decks, and some of our creatures could be very, very big. Putting a Cartouche possibly on a Vadiris Gearhawk, you're just going to win that life swing. One Vraska's Attempt is in the sideboard, like I said, that extra great all-star spot remover from Standard. And then I've got a one-off. I'll put a Planeswalker in there. We've got Vraska. We're in the colours of green and black. This is just a cracking card. You know, maybe late game. We've got a little bit of ramp in there with the servants and stuff like that. So bring that in there. It could be, you know, Vraska can win the game on its own. When you get to that minus 10 and put your opponent's life to one, hopefully we should still have some creatures left that have been protecting it to just go in and do that final bit of damage. So guys, that was my updated Counter Surge deck. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any ideas how you would update this deck, maybe different to me, put it in the comments. Put some link to your deck list. I would really be interested to see. And I will be going over the other Challenger decks in the next few weeks as well. So you know, you've got that to look forward to. So if you like what you see, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you, you, know, if you feel like pressing the sub button, that would really help out as well. Anyway guys, you take care and I'll see you on the next video.